Hi, Lila. Hello. Welcome to Fireside. We're just, we're going to get started in just a minute. We're waiting for Jane to join us. So no problem. No problem. But we're glad you're here, especially since we've been reading the news lately. It's TikTok's crazy in the news. We'll have to talk about that in a little while. Yeah, absolutely. I think everybody's, it's on everybody's mind. I know. <laughs> I know. So hopefully Jane will be here shortly and we can get started. Yeah. Where are you joining us from? Um, I am joining from California. So it's afternoon here for me. Oh, okay. I know it's getting late. It's dinner time on the East Coast. Ah, okay. Is, is Jane from the East Coast? Yes. So she's on the East Coast. So I don't know if you saw, but my daughter was in here doing her homework. So she went sneaking out. Oh. I said, oh, mommy's <laughs> going to go talk to people about TikTok. <laughs> All right. I'm going to actually... Oops. Let me join you up on stage so you're not by yourself until Jane gets here. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Okay. So what part of California are you from? Um, I'm in the Central Valley in Sacramento. I oh. lived in LA for a long time, but my, I, my daughter is now eight. And so when she was about two, we moved to Sacramento to be closer to my parents um, because having a small child is, diff is very hard. <laughs> Yes. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. My daughter's in Sacramento now. Oh, she really? Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. Normally if I say Sacramento, half the people just give me a blank look. Cause they're like, and if I tell them it's the capital, they're like, no, no, I'm pretty sure it's gotta be San Francisco or I LA. <laughs> I'm like, no, I, I, I swear. I swear it's yeah. Sacramento. <laughs> it's true. It's true. All right. Well, I hope Jane isn't having any problems joining us. Yeah, I know she's joining via the website set, set up, so. Yeah, well, she's got to be, she can't do it on her computer. She's got to do it on her, her phone or her iPad. Wait, I'm messaging her. The fact that I haven't heard from her probably means that she's, she's working on trying to get on. Yes. So. Yeah. This is exciting. Um, I only have started using this platform uh, in the past couple of days since I, you know, got set up for this. It's really interesting. Yeah, it's really fun. So. It's, I, I really enjoy it. It's just spreading the word about it and getting people used to a new, new platform. Yeah, I think there's a learning curve anytime there's a new, um, a new social media anything. Absolutely, and when you're in my age demographic, it's a little resistant to doing that, but. Um, I'm glad for the people that have tried. So thank you in the audience for being here. We're just waiting for our other author, uh, Jane, and hopefully she'll be joining us shortly and we can get started. But um, just curious for those of you who are in the audience, um, how many of you use TikTok by show of clapping your hands? You can hit the react button and hit clapping hands and wanting to know how many of you actually use TikTok. And if there's silence, <laughs> I don't know if that means they didn't know how to do that or if they haven't uh, haven't used it, but it'll be interesting. I, I do think more and more people are, are getting on. It looks like a couple people have gone to the clap hands reaction, if, assuming I'm reading the screen correctly. Yes, yes, that's correct. And you can see the little- uh, Jane says that she's still getting the same screen as before. Um, is she on her phone or iPad? Because it doesn't work on computer. Oh. Uh, let me text her. Sorry. Okay. Thanks for your patience, audience. I appreciate it. Yeah. If and it, and if it's if we want to, you know, if she's going to keep trying the tech and and trying a couple of things. I can always sort of get us started and talk a little bit about the TikTok and books and all of those things okay. while she gets on. With so. Another show when um, somebody wasn't able to access is they, uh, the person on screen, which would be you, called the other guest and just held the phone up. So that's a possibility too, if Jane can't join us. Yeah, I can, I can always pull her up and I'm sitting right next to my computer. I can always have her on Zoom um, or something like that if, if, okay. if need be. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll get started in just a moment. Yeah, let's see. 
you want to talk a little bit about, um, I'm going to introduce you, but just to fill the space, if you want to talk a little bit about uh, your audiobook narration, since this is an audiobook series, and I'll talk a little bit about that. Yes. So I think that one of the reasons that I was super interested when you messaged about it is that, so I, um, Jane and I created the class TikTok Sells Books uh, when we realized very early now, now it's like considered very early in the game on TikTok that we were seeing measurable success on TikTok, even without these like giant success stories that I think are so much a part of the narrative. Um, and I, you know, so I've been there and I've really watched the book talk world evolve on this platform. And one of the things that I found so incredibly interesting um, is the, and, and I do think this ties in with, hap with what's happening industry -wide, wide, but the presence of the audiobook narrators and audiobook um, specific uh, book talkers and people who only talk about the audiobooks, you know, they, they don't, they prefer that and read exclusively in the in the audio format as opposed to uh, ebook or print book or something like that has really been uh, pretty huge on on TikTok. I do think that um, I often jokingly say that the audiobook narrators are kind of the cool kids. Hi, Jane. <laughs> there she is. Hi, Jane. You're here. You did it. Yay. Glad you made it. <laughs> I can't quite hear you yet, so check and see if you're muted. I don't, I don't see that she's muted, but she might have to turn her volume up. How about that? Oh, wonderful. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, well, we were just chatting a little bit while we were waiting for you to join us, and we're glad you're here. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, hello, Firesiders, and welcome to Adventures by the Book, where our mission is to connect people through the superpower of books, I'm your host, Susan Macbeth, and I'm excited for today's show because we have best-selling authors Jane Rylon and Lila Dubois here to tell you how TikTok sells books, which is going to be really fun. So we have an approximate 45-minute chat today. It's intended as a conversation, so those of you who are in our audience, be thinking of your questions. You can either type them in the Q&A box or, or in your React button. You do have to click an emoji before you do that. Um, but we want to hear your questions and we want to hear their audiobook stories as well. So today is part three of a five-part audiobook narration series on Fireside every Thursday through the end of the month. Uh, as I mentioned, the topic is TikTok sales book, books, which is really hot right now. Um, we're anxious to learn more, so I'm going to introduce our two guests and I'll let them take it away. So Jane Rylon is a New York Times and USA Today bestselling author who has sold more than Two million copies of her books. That is crazy, Jane. Congratulations. <laughs> She's you. received numerous industry awards, including Erotic Romance and Swirl Award, uh, the Romantic Times Reviewer's Choice Award for Best Indie, oh, yes, Best Indie Erotic Romance, which recognizes excellence in diverse romance. She's an honor roll member of the Romance Writers of America. Her stories used to begin as daydreams in seemingly endless business meetings. Haven't we all been there? But now she is a full-time author who employs the skills she learned from her straight-laced corporate existence into the business of writing. Welcome, Jane. Thank you. And Lila Dubois is a multi-published best-selling author of erotic, paranormal, and fantasy romance. Her books have been nominated for many awards, including romance... <clears throat> RT, Romance Times? Romantic Times, yeah. <laughs> now Romantic defunct. Times, thank you. Book reviews, erotic novella for Undone Rebel and for The Golden Flogger. Having spent expensive time, extensive time in France, Egypt, Turkey, Ireland, and England, she speaks five languages, none of them including English <laughs> fluently. That's great. <laughs> Welcome, Lila. Thank you so much. And I look forward to learning from you guys today. But before you, before I disappear from camera and let you two take it away, um, I'm going to start you with a question. Uh, the theme of today's event, as I mentioned, is TikTok sells books. Can you first give us a brief overview for anybody in the audience who may not know what TikTok is, on what it is exactly, and what it is about TikTok that works so well as a platform for selling books? 
And I don't know which one of you would like to start, but uh... I feel like this is kind of my part of the spiel. So okay, great. <laughs> I'm going to let you take it away, and I'm going to disappear from screen. Thank you. Yep. All right, so TikTok is um, an app that's made by a Chinese company called ByteDance, and it focuses on short form videos. So we mean really short, so like 15 seconds. So if you're on other platforms, you may have seen them trying to capture the same kind of format with something like Instagram Reels or Facebook Stories. Uh, the reason why that this platform is really important is because it's growing really quickly. There are about, uh, last official numbers released were over 1 billion uh, monthly active users on the app. However, uh, in the preliminary numbers that we've seen, um, it looks like for 2022, that might be as many as 1.5 billion. So if you just do some quick mental math, um, allowing for the fact that India is not on TikTok and China has its own version of the app called Duyin, uh, you know, you're looking at maybe one in five people on planet Earth is on the app. So that's kind of crazy. There's an audience for everything and everyone on TikTok. Um, it did originally start out as something that was based in a song and for a younger audience, but as it's evolved, it is not going that way now. Um, so there's definitely people of all age ranges, all interests on the app. One of the things that makes it unique is that it both has a um, content creation side as well as the consumption side of the platform. So you can make your content directly in the TikTok app, which allows you to use those tools in a multi-layered storytelling approach. So when you're adding sounds, when you're using effects, certain text styles, they all tell something to the story, they add something to the story that you're telling. And that's really important because you're able to say a lot in 15 seconds. So uh, the reason we think it's so highly effective is because you're making your plea face to face with other people where Instagram is one perfect picture of your life. TikTok is just you being you. You can be a hot mess on there and it's fine. Um, but when you're excited about something and you're showing that enthusiasm face to face with someone else, it's very compelling. So if people get on and they say, I read this book, I loved it. I know this might not be your normal thing, but just go check it out. Just trust me. Um, it's it's actually a very effective tool for conversion. And so our conversion on this app is much better than on any other app um, that we've used in the past or any other platform. So does that about cover it, you think, Lila? I do. I think that covers it. And I think that the understanding that TikTok really started as a music and music slash music video slash dance platform in a lot of ways can, I think, be directly you, you can follow the you know the logic line down to why it is that audiobook um that's why i was talking about uh, while we were waiting for your tech to iron itself out um that why audiobooks are audiobooks are king on tiktok in so many ways and that's what i was saying was like that the audiobook narrators are kind of the cool kids um, of the book talk world. And I do think it's in, in a lot of ways, it's because TikTok centers audio, you know, the combination of audio and video. I think for a long time, we were kind of watching videos silently over on Facebook, uh, you know, and like the Facebook watch um, was often done silently. In fact, it defaulted to mute most of, for a long time, um, Facebook automatically muted anything. So you were usually reading the captions, whereas TikTok does not do that. Like if you wanna mute a TikTok, you're physically turning the volume down on your phone because there isn't a mute function built into the TikTok platform. So I, I think that for audiobook people, um, that's, an important point to sort of bring together is that this is this platform really centered that audio and so made it there there's an opportunity there um, that a lot of people have capitalized on yeah and i think maybe one thing that we didn't make clear right at the beginning the reason that we know a lot about tiktok is because uh, we challenged each other to learn the app right in the beginning um, you know, nobody really wanted another social media platform to be on more, <laughs> less than Lila and I, like we just didn't want to do it. Uh, but once we did a few experiments and found out how effective it was, we really hopped on. And then after that, uh, we realized that there was a need to show other authors and other, other, uh, people how to use the platform to leverage their marketing efforts. And so we actually started a class. And so Lila and I have been involved in helping about 550, well, more than that now, more than 550 authors launched their um, 
their accounts on TikTok and grow their accounts as part of our community, which is called TikTok Sells Books. So that's kind of where the the headline comes from here today and why we have more experience than just our own accounts, which you know we are obsessed with and we are addicted to and we post all the time. But we also have had a wide range of experience, including narrators who have joined our community. Um, so we've been able to see what they've done with the app and how things have gone. So that's what we're basing our experience on. And one thing I want to say um, is that there's so much discussion around these wild, massive successes that TikTok is bringing or, or BookTok is bringing to book people, books that take off, uh, people who have end up with, you know, massive deals with traditional publishers thanks to something on book talk and that narrative is really dominating the space um and it, fair enough because it's it's inspirational it's aspirational those those stories are are you know so exciting that we focus on them but one thing that Jane and I do and that we push all the time is that it is not an all or nothing. It is not viral success or nothing on TikTok for people in the book world. Smaller, measurable, met, you know, um, efforts, regular posting, a video that you know gets maybe a thousand views or two thousand views, that will move the needle for book sales. Even that small amount for authors can measurably build your audience, bring people into your, you know, if you're pushing people into the first book in a series, now, you know, if you can get them through one book and then they sign up for your newsletter, it becomes measurable in a way that a lot of other smaller efforts are. Um, so unfortunately, this idea of viral success or nothing is is really, I think, uh, putting people off of TikTok right now. And that's unfortunate because um, that's that's not the only way to be successful. Uh, in fact, Jane and I have been pulling together. We always like to update the numbers and we've been pulling together updated numbers. I just had a release and we were pulling together numbers for my release, um, showing you know what happened with that. And, and it proves oh, that without these massive viral successes, TikTok does still sell books. And it sells books um, in a unique way in that it's, all formats of books. For a long time, there used to be this like, if you wanted to sell the ebook, you did it this way. And oh, print books were really only sold, you know, in, in physical bookstores or this or that. But TikTok's desire for story in so many different formats, from print to uh, digital books to special editions to as I, I've already mentioned, the audiobooks is really um, being magnified and even expanded upon by book talk, where people will talk about having multiple versions of the same story or trying something in a different format because they've seen it on TikTok. Yeah, I mean, I think we have straight up data on this. And so our best performing videos convert at around one sale for every 75 views. And I would say on average for a person who's just getting started, maybe hasn't honed their videos yet to be as effective as they can be eventually, we see people in around the one in 200 range or one in 250 range. So if you're talking about getting on every day and I'm like perfectly happy if I get a video that has 2000 views every day, right? And you're selling eight copies a day for a video that took you, I mean, I can make a week's worth of content in about an hour plus then I, I post every day and do like the editing and adding text as I post. So maybe 10 to 15 minutes a day. If I can get another eight to 10 sales out of that plus building an audience plus, you know, like gaining the followers so that I can come back when I have a new release or whatever and really hit that hard. I'm perfectly happy with investing that amount of time for that return. Um, and while we have then we call it like entering each video you post entering the viral video lottery, right? So you're going around, you're humming along, you're pulling that lever, having everyday repeatable successes. And then you get one that goes bigger, you know, whether that's, um, you know, for me, like if I have one go to 50,000, something like that, I'm happy, super happy with that. And that can make a lasting impact on my sales. Uh, Lila's had ones that go as big as, I don't know, half a million, um, something like that. Those have long lasting, like months long impacts um, on your sales. And even through the smaller videos, um, just to give you like hard 
details. Like Lila has been able to take a um, backlist trio of books and the corresponding box set of those three books and 10x, more than 10x their sales in a month from their average monthly sales. So, I mean, it is very worth your time and investment. And like, like she was saying before, that even goes stronger with audiobooks. So almost always when, when I post something, people will ask, is this in audio? Where can I get it? Things like that. That doesn't happen to me on other platforms on Facebook or Instagram, for example. So there is a desire for people to consume um, in the audiobook format from TikTok. In, in fact, I would say that a lot of um, readers and on TikTok, there's starting to be an, even an expectation of audio. I think in the past, it used to be sort of an exception, like it was really exciting and rare to find an audiobook, especially from an indie author. Um, and now there's really much more of an expectation. In fact, when I have seen, I've had people comment on videos about one of my books saying, is this an audio? And I'll say, oh no, I'm, I'm so sorry. Um, you know, I, I haven't put stuff into audio yet. And I had someone who then proceeded to reply to that, you know, I'd reply to them, they replied to me and they started tagging narrators, like mm -hmm. get it together, Lila, snap along here. I already tagged some people. I done picked them for you. Just go ahead and hire them to record the book. And I'm over here like, wait, wait, wait. I, I, <laughs> so um, yeah, I, I think that the, it, if, as, an, as an author, it's a little terrifying. I'm not going to lie. This idea that it's almost an expectation, um, especially when, and then you hear people starting to be like, well, why isn't the audiobook dropping the same day? Um, there are, mo there are many. Oh my gosh. I, I'm never going to be that organized. <laughs> um, there are many people who, there's a couple of um, book talkers who, like I said, like they focus entirely on audiobook and they'll do big calendars of the audiobook releases. Um, and like, so they won't talk about like any new releases that are ebook. They only talk about new release audio. Um, so it's almost like there's two sets of schedules that are happening for a lot of people. So uh, yeah, I think that um, the, it's it's both good and bad. Um, I'm assuming that, I mean, actually I know we did have uh, people who told us that the audiobook sales have increased massively. I don't know that that can only be tracked to TikTok, but I certainly think TikTok is playing a part. Um, the volume of audiobooks available is much higher now than it ever has been. We've seen the emergence of more and more uh, like, you know, the audio only bargain newsletters and audio only, uh, you know, focused websites and all these kinds of things. And this, if you want to see that play out in real time with comments from readers, TikTok is where you would go to do that. Yes, there are absolutely yeah. like audiobook Facebook groups, but if you just want to see it happening live, it's TikTok comments, that's where it's gonna be. Cool. And like, what a great opportunity for narrators to go on and meet the people who read the books, right? Like, so for me, one thing I look at, I have a longstanding relationship with my primary narrator who's done, I don't know, more than 30 of my audiobooks um, at this point. We've been working together for more than 10 years and he has his own following now. And so when you are looking at working with people like that and what they bring to their table, the TikTok platform for an for a narrator is going to be very important um, for people selecting narrators as well. And what a great opportunity for them to come on. You already know that they're comfortable performing things. They have great voices. Their sound quality is going to be excellent. They know how to make these things. Like they have a lot of advantages going into it that a normal person might not. And so they're set up well to succeed on TikTok. I would say almost across the board, the audio audiobook people are instantly more comfortable and sound calmer and much more natural on TikTok than the authors do. Nine times out of 10, the first 10 videos and author posts are awkward, too long, don't get to the point, not pithy. The audio quality, it's trash, you know what I mean? And then you get like the first, you see the first video from a narrator and you're like, ah, okay. <laughs> this person yeah. knows, knows what they're doing to, to a huge extent. Um, there is something I thought, like I thought we would bring up Jane, which is a little like shaky, um, which is the 
fact that when you post audio on TikTok, when you post a video, the audio track of your video becomes automatically yeah. part of TikTok's library. Yes. Anyone can go to your video, click the little record icon in the bottom corner, and they can now use your audio for whatever video it is they want. There are many, many of BookTok's top trending audios are in fact clips from audiobooks, whether or not they were pulled from the audiobook or quite often it's the narrator reading the lines from the audiobook at the request of someone. Um, and that, and, and then that, then it becomes part of the library. But I do think that that is something to keep in mind. There have been instances of people getting upset saying, hey, now you're using my audio to talk about your book or and it's not the book that I'm reading from, but you know, it's some sort of generic audio. And, and unfortunately there's nothing in TikTok that prevents that. So I think like yes. you have to understand the culture of TikTok. And so for people who haven't been on before, that's actually how the app works. So a lot of times you'll hear somebody, um, we actually have people in our class in TikTok sales books who've done this on purpose, who've made sounds um, saying things like, if you, um, you know, what are you reading right now or something like that? And then somebody will take that sound and make a video on top of it showing what they're reading, right? Or um, there's one uh, I'm thinking by Cindy Proctor King, where she said something like, um, you know, what we're going to do now is get off TikTok and actually write the books so people could read the books, you know, and enjoy the books, something like that. And then other authors have used that sound and, you know, kind of in a Me Too way, kind of, you know, laughing at themselves or scrolling on TikTok when they should be writing books. So that is actually like how the app works. It's part of the culture. And so I think when people come into it cold and maybe aren't a part of a community like ours or something like that, they're not prepared for um, the way that can ripple through their content. And so when you go on the app, that's actually a good thing. You want that to happen. You want people to pick up your sound and start using it because it's good for you in the algorithm. It's going to help promote your other works. It's going to help tie your account more tightly to other book talk accounts. This, this is what you want to happen, but you have to be a little bit deliberate about what you choose so that as other people start to use this sound, um, that it's, you know, going in the direction that you want. And so there are ways around it um, that we teach in our class about how you can underlie like a generic sound and get it to be the thing that shows up in the little record um, when people are using a sound, if you do not want your audio to become the default sound. So there are ways, technical ways around this, like that we teach in our class and things like that. Um, so just know that that's, it's, it's not an absolute, <laughs> but if you do elect to have your sound to be the default, default sound out there, just know that other people can use it and you do actually want that. So like one of the worst things you could do is come down on somebody and be like, hey, why'd you use that? Like I've, I've seen that go really badly where people didn't understand how the environment works. Um, and we're like, you know, you shouldn't be using my things. And it's like, uh, that's kind of like, that's the purpose. So um, there is like a little understanding that has to happen about the unique aspects of the culture versus other social media platforms. And, you know, again, this is all part of what makes book talks so interesting and compelling for our um, consumers, for our readers. Yeah. And then can I just interject for a minute? Because I want to remind everyone before our time runs out, we still have time, but um, that you can ask questions. And I see that um, author Joe Stillman has joined us on stage. So I assume he has a question or a comment. But so I wanted to remind everyone that you can invite yourself up on stage by clicking on the little circle in the lower left hand corner of your screen invite to yourself to speak, invite yourself up on stage. And periodically, I will just randomly select audience members who may be too shy to come up and ask questions. But um, Joe, welcome. Did you have a question or a comment for Jane and Lila? And I'm curious, do you, do you use TikTok? Um, I tried using TikTok and uh, I posted a bunch of videos. Um, but in truth, I'm just like tap, tap, tapping in the dark, and I have no idea if the if what I'm doing is is productive at all, and uh, and so you know mostly I you know I'm I'm interested in maybe taking your class because this is all really interesting to me, and one of the things I'll be curious to to learn about also is um, trying to create an audio 
um, version of my book because right now one doesn't exist and it does sound like it would just make a huge difference on TikTok. And so I'm just I'm just here to learn, basically. Well, welcome, Joe. Thank you for coming. <laughs> um, I think whether or not you do audio of your book, TikTok is like an amazing place to be for authors right now. This is like a fantastic environment. And so, but I agree with you. If you don't know what you're doing, then you're just tapping away. You're probably not going to be as effective as you could be. Um, and I would say to start, like you need to be a good consumer of TikTok to understand book talks. So one of the first things you want to do when you get on is train your algorithm. That's where we start everyone in our class. Um, and so you can do things like follow the hashtag, favorite the hashtag book talk. And then start maybe searching for some of your favorite authors, some of your favorite books, um, and you'll start to just dig yourself deeper and deeper and you'll wander away from like random cat videos or dancing girls or whatever the algorithm might show you at first and you'll find your way to book talk. And then once you start to see what other people are creating, it might give you a better idea of what to produce because what's not gonna work is just taking stuff you would use on other social media platforms and dumping it into TikTok. It's just not going to convert well. So a traditional book trailer, not going to convert well. Um, like a static image from Canva, like a graphic that you add some stickers and music to, not going to convert well. So we have a lot of um, formats that we talk about in our class. So we go through every day. We have seven assignments or eight assignments where we teach people content types and we have them create a video and then we give feedback on that video. So it'll kind of teach you like how to use a sound, how to duet, how to stitch, um, character confession videos, book flips, like page flips. These are all like part of the culture of book talk. So we we go through all of those um, in our class. But if you just watch a lot, you'll start to pick up on what is effective. I'm glad you mentioned that, that, Joe, because um, Thank you. That you, know, great. you say one in five people are using TikTok, but that means four out of five people are not. And there's a lot of people out there who maybe like Joe or us at Adventures by the Book who haven't used it uh, or may have just kind of looked at it and been overwhelmed. So can you talk a little bit about where, thank you for your, your comments and questions, Joe. Um, and can you guys talk a little bit about uh, your classes, where people sign up, how they find you? Um, because I imagine there's a lot of interest in that. Yeah, sure. You can find us at www.tiktoksellsbooks.com. <laughs> I know, very original. <laughs> um, there's information about our class. We're, we have a session open right now for um, April 23rd. We only offer them periodically because we're doing our own writing schedules and making our own TikToks and stuff. So we only open a couple times a year um, and we limit the seats because we do give one-on-one -on -one feedback to everybody during the 10 days. Um, and we even have a community that's ongoing where we do monthly Zoom office hours, kind of like this, but we can look at people's phones, help them out with troubleshooting or strategizing and stuff like that. So it's a lot of like time commitment for us. So it, it's kind of limited, um, but it is open right now for um, April 23rd and people can find out more at tiktoksellsbooks.com. I just want to add that I, I say this um, quite often when Jane and I are giving presentations or when I'm talking to our class um, is that I would consider myself somebody very tech savvy. Uh, you know, I, I'm, an, I'm an elder millennial, um, but I have never had never run into an app or piece of tech that I couldn't basically figure out given an hour, you know, G give me an hour and I'm going to, I'm going to figure it out. Cause I enough grew up with emerging tech that uh, I'll figure this out. And you're not afraid and, to like poke every button. Oh, I will press every button. I, I, Jane is very like cautious and this, and I'm like, I, it's too late. I already pushed all of the buttons, but I, <laughs> The first time I tried to make a TikTok, I truly could not figure out what to do. I, I, I had seen a video I wanted to make and I wanted to replicate it and I truly could not figure out how to do it. And it was the first time in my life I ever felt tech illiterate. And that feeling of just being so lost is a huge part of the reason that Jane and I started. I mean, this class was born of Jane and I pushing each other to do it. And we were gathering notes. We had shared Google documents and we were just typing out notes and keeping track of everything we learned. And at a certain point we said, you know what? Like we had to struggle through all of this. We should tell other people how to do it. And we initially went to just our friends and said, hey, we got on TikTok, it's, we're seeing it sell books. Do you want us to tell you what we figured out? Um, and that's really where this was born. So 100% that feeling of, not only do I like 
it's a whole separate thing about trying to understand the culture of TikTok, which evolves all the time. And it's oh. one of the reasons that we have this like ongoing class um, and we we constantly are talking about what's happening that's new, that's different, um, and pushing the people who who are the alumni of our class, as we call them, to continue growing and changing what it is they're doing. But also this tech aspect of the app is quite intense. Um, and it is, it can be difficult. It doesn't work exactly the way you want. And I will say for anybody in the room who's like, well, I edit video, that might actually make it worse. Like if you know how to use Premiere Pro or if you've ever edited video before, it might actually be worse because it's going to be backwards for you. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of how you create a TikTok, we, we started this by saying, hey, we're centering, it centers the audio. It centers the audio to the point that a lot of times to create a video, you have to start with yeah. the audio as opposed to recording a video and adding the audio, which is what people who edit video would think to do. So right. for anybody out there who's like, if you're like, man, I, I tried and I'm completely lost, same. Anybody who's like, oh, I know how to edit video. Listen, also same, because I do know how to edit video. Um, and, and I know enough about like how to really edit video that I knew that this was backwards seeming, um, but it makes sense when you sort of backtrack the evolution of the app. So and in a way, maybe that's why the audiobook narrators are better at it, because they, they're always going to start with the audio anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, their, their default is to start with the audio. Maybe that's why their videos are coming across better and their quality is often a bit higher right out the gate. And it makes sense if you consider the origins again, right? So this was an app where you literally, so I mentioned a duet feature where you can take someone else's video, play your video next to it and either react to them or do something that plays off of it. It was literally for duetting. Like you would sing, one person would sing one part of a song and the other person would sing the other. So like this is the foundation of the app, like the sound matters most. And so it makes sense when you think of it from that way, but it is completely backwards from how every other editing tool works. And uh, somebody asked in the Q&A what our, uh, our usernames are. Jane's mm -hmm. is simply at Jane Rylan and mine is at Lila Dubois Books mm -hmm. on TikTok. So if you wanna follow us on there, uh, see what we're up to. And one thing I wanna point out is a lot of times people's instinct is to be like, oh, their last video only had X number of views. That means almost nothing on TikTok. That's the other thing that I think gets people is they'll think, yeah. oh, it's not like YouTube where every single time you post a video, it needs to be massive. TikTok is a little bit of a numbers game. Um, and it so- It messes with your mind on purpose. It, it, it truly, yeah. <laughs> on purpose it's, to keep you going, yeah. Yeah, so you, you kind of start to like, it's like you're playing a game and you're trying to be rewarded with views within the app. And in fact, TikTok has admitted yeah. to being gamified. And I think the other thing people should know too is when they look at our what we call our main accounts, those the ones that she gave you are our main accounts. That's where we show our face. That's where we do certain types of content. But we have other super secret accounts where we do <laughs> other styles that we teach in our class, like page flips that are more um, direct sales rather than like a long term platform approach. So when you see those accounts, that's what we consider our main account. That's what we consider like a long term approach. And so if you see that it's a, a lot of based around us being on camera with our face, don't think that that limits you from being on TikTok. If you do not want to show your face, there are other ways and other strategies um, that we also employ, but not on those accounts as much. But please do not do not say to Jane and I, well, I can't be I can't put my face on camera because I'm not young or I'm not pretty right. or mm, no, no, that no, <laughs> don't do that because that's not true. It's simply right. not true, especially on book talk. Book right. talk almost gleefully ignores a lot of the aesthetic aspects that might be happening on main TikTok, where yes, there's a lot of like makeup and everybody's looking cute and this and that. Book talk is kind of gleefully like, I filmed this at 3 a.m. in my pajamas with bad lighting because I just hit this really exciting yeah. part of the book and I'm either excited or pissed or something. Like that is a, a true love of books and almost a little bit of a, 
I just don't care because I'm just here to talk about the books. Vibe drives a, a lot of book talk. Which I think is why like you and I originally got on because we're business people. We wanted to check out like selling books. But like if it's not obvious to people already, they should know that we're completely addicted to TikTok by this point. Like we buy so like we are sucked in also like we buy so many books. Lila buys books she would never ordinarily read. When she was at my house last, she read some horror book and got scared and thought she was going to come jump in bed with us. In the middle of the I, night, not, you know? I am not a horror reader. I am not a horror reader. I am not even like sometimes thrillers are too much. And TikTok sucks me in. I'm telling you, it's a good thing I'm selling books on TikTok because I need that to fund my increased buying <laughs> habits. I love it. I love it. Hey, I see that uh, Debbie has joined us up on Hi, stage. Debbie. Welcome, Debbie. Did you have a question or comment Hi, for Gina Lila? Hello. Yeah, thank you. Hi, ladies. It's This is really fascinating to me, and I'm not really familiar with TikTok. Um, wondering, do you have any sort of statistics about demographics? I mean, is it most effective for um, for readers of, of younger generations or all across the board? Or, or, or No, so like you may have come in a little bit later, but there's over a billion monthly active users on TikTok. There's literally an audience for everyone. Some of the accounts that we follow are um, people in their 90s that we absolutely love. There's an account called Old Gaze. There is, which is for old gay men who are like besties and like living it up their best life on TikTok. Grandma Droniak is in her 90s. Um, there's, you know, there are people of all ages and all interests on TikTok. With that many people on there, there's something for everybody. We have had authors in genres as obscure as wuxia, which I did not know before I met this student in our class, which is um, kind of like martial arts books, something along the lines of like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Um, and he has done a lot of like educating and opening up um, more like uh, people who hadn't heard of it before or but would be interested in finding his niche on there. So like we've had people, we've had humor, we've had nonfiction. I mean, every obscure niche of all ages, we have people who write children books, we have people who write um, historic fiction. So right, I'm thinking like young audiences, old audiences, I think there's something for everyone. The other thing to keep in mind is that I think that sometimes the book world gets kind of in its own head about who the audience is for each particular genre. Like these types of people read these types of books. And I'm sure this was all backed up by data somewhere, right? Like the publishers or Publishers Weekly or somebody collected all this data and had it and said, okay, these are the people. So therefore I am marketing to blank. And TikTok kind of blew that out of the water. And here's here's why. Again, this is coming back to the culture of TikTok. TikTok very much has a culture that can best be described as, I'll try anything once. Like, love it, 100% respect. I write spicy books, so I'm like, yes, absolutely, great. But seriously, the fact that, okay, so if any, if I don't know if anybody here has read it, but Song of Achilles, that is so niche literary fiction. That book should have been read by a handful of people, half of whom were reading it because they were judges for the literary awards that it was going for. Instead, that book has sold some insane, did, they hit, did it hit a million copies? I think it more than hit yeah, a million copies. 10,000 copies a week during when they uh, did an article about it in the New York Times last March. And at that time it had 35 uh, million uses of its hashtag on BookTok. And when I looked recently, it was something like 150 million uses. So yeah, I mean, they're selling gazillions. And, and that was driven by TikTok. And the reason yeah. why that people who were not traditionally the demographic for literary fiction, and, and even a, like a, you know, historical retelling, my, historical mythology retelling literary fiction, so really niche, was because people got on TikTok and said, this is such a good story. No, it doesn't matter where it takes place, you know, what it is, how, is it? no, this is such a good story. So people said, fantastic, I too want to read a good story. And so they jumped on and they read it and it really sort of destroyed our understanding of what demographics look like. There are tons of examples of that. Um, Ice Planet Barbarians by Ruby Dixon, that 
sci-fi spicy, which is spicy is the code word on TikTok for erotic. So sci-fi erotic romance. We're talking about fiction and then romance and then sci-fi and then erotic sci-fi, right? Like we are deep in a subgenre was blown up by TikTok. Jane and I actually know the person who created the original video. Yeah. Um, and Emma literally just said in the video, go read Ice Planet Barbarians. Trust me, you'll thank me. That was yeah. it. And yeah, admittedly that went really viral and a lot of people kind of were curious enough. And then the, those books are very good. I need to point out that well, yeah. the books are good. Yeah. You know, a Song of Achilles is amazing. Ice Planet Barbarians is great. Um, and there were people who were so far outside what the demographic should have been. Um, big book talkers who normally focus on high fantasy or I'm talking about like Easy Cat who focuses on like manga. They were right. reading it and reviewing it. So a lot of things, one of the things that we sell, we tell people in our class, especially when they say, well, but my genre is and insert some niche, niche, niche genre here. Okay, that's great you need to tell people that this is a good story because that's what book talk wants to know they maybe they if you ask them flat out would you like to read erotic sci-fi romance they might say no right because that's not something they know look at it this way people don't know they want your book until you tell them that they want your book Jane and I made a lot of money doing, doing that, telling people, hey, you didn't even know you wanted this until this moment when I told you that you wanted this. And you may not have ever read another book like it, but you're going to try it once because Book Talk has convinced you that you should try everything at least once. I feel like the best example of this is actually when you made that video clip for class. We had um, a lot of people in our class write clean romance or sweet romance, whatever you want to call it, no heat romance, right? And Lila and I both write very spicy romance. So she made a video that said something like, hey, I had too much spice. I think, you know, my stomach hurts. Can somebody give me some uh, suggestions of clean romance or sweet romance and something with no spice? And the amount of people we found who were your audience, who also were like, I love to read that, like blew our minds. Because on other um, platforms, we would never ever think there's any crossover between what we write and what in that genre. And so, you know, that was like the most eye-opening moment for me. I was like, whoa, people will, people will read anything. As long as like somebody is on there, they're legit and they're saying, I loved this. It's so compelling. It's, it's better than, you know, an image on Instagram of pretty flowers and whatever. If somebody comes on and they tell you, I read this book and I couldn't put it down, you know, that, that makes other people want to read it too. Or I read this book and I hated it and here's why. And then half yeah. the audience goes, I, well, I would love it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's that answer your question? And then some, you guys, you guys ought to sell what you do. <laughs> you guys are fantastic. I'm intrigued and I appreciate it. And I'm going to, I'm going to try to figure it out. I've got your class date written down. I'll have to look into it further. So thank you so much. Thank you. There you go. I I welcome to come join us. <laughs> yeah. Fair think, warning. Like if you get addicted, like we did, sorry. <laughs> and I see that Joe, of... Joe has joined us again. So he must have another question, but before um, he asks his question, I have one for you because you mentioned, um, uh, Song of Achilles, and I, we've done uh, Adventures by the Book of Ants with Madeline Miller, the author. And oh. I happen to know I was I was going to ask this question anyway, but thinking of her um, just made it more relevant. Is that I happen to know from working with her that she is an introvert, and I was thinking of audiobook narrators are performers, so they're probably used to being right. in front of an audience and not not being so. Uh, worried about how they appear on TikTok. So are you at a disadvantage if you are an introvert? I think that it can be, but at the same time, it's just you and your, realistically, it's just you and your phone, right? And yeah. a lot of times it, you can, we tell, we've, we have told people before, you can kind of treat it as like a video diary. Imagine you're just talking to yourself can be one way. There's a whole section we do talking about like if you're self-conscious, if you're uncomfortable being on camera. Um, and that was even before. Now there are non-face accounts. So accounts where you don't have to have your face on it that are more viable. At the start, you know, even a year ago, certainly 18 months ago, that wasn't really viable on TikTok. And it is now because the platform evolves fairly quickly. So I don't think that being an introvert is a disadvantage. 
but I do think you might have to put in a little bit more of the work to find a way to make yourself comfortable. Um, unless you're on, and quite honestly, unless the way that you are awkward comes off as entertaining because like I could name 20 book talkers who are awkward when they talk about books and that's part of the appeal because it feels like you're it feels like you're talking to your friend who's kind of bad at explaining things you know um like there there is an element of that but we do cover there's a whole set of slides in our kickoff presentation um about like if you're self-conscious because Jane really didn't want to be on camera at the start I did not at all and so, yeah, there are a lot of different ways that you can make yourself feel comfortable. But at the end of the day, it's about you feeling comfortable because that is not a requirement of TikTok. Like, you know, you could go on and like we said, be a hot mess and it'd be perfectly fine. Like Colleen Hoover, right? Queen of TikTok. So um, NPD released a report that said of the 25 best selling books in print last year, all books, all countries, all everything. Colleen Hoover had eight of the 25. Um, and when you look at her TikTok account, I mean, she's like, she's like my idol, queen of the hot mess. Like there was literally a video she did one time that Lila and I saw where she wasn't wearing a bra and she like picked her boobs up and dropped them on her laptop and was like, okay, ready to write now. You know, like you can literally be as genuine as you want to be on there and it's totally fine. But I understand that sometimes we have to get our brains to catch up to that reality. And so that's where we kind of teach like methods to, um, calming some of that, um, you know, like uneasiness. And so for me, it was making a character in my mind who was Jane, the author, who is authentic to everything I love when I'm reading, when I'm writing, the kinds of stories I adore, but not necessarily like the part of me that goes to the grocery store, if that makes sense. So um, in some ways, it's kind of freeing because you can just be the person you want to be when you're an author. Um, and in that way, I, for me now, it's not an issue anymore, but it was when I first started. And I will say for that, for audiobook narrators, the sort of norm is usually it's videos of them sitting in their booth. Usually you can kind of see their microphone. There's a lot of a little bit, a lot of that, like you wanted to see behind the scenes. A lot of book talk kind of like wants to see. There's always requests for like tour of your booth, tour of your setup. What mic do you use? Like, you know, all these kind of questions and not from like aspiring audiobook narrators. I don't know why we're even right. interested. I'm never going to use this information. I do not need a fancy microphone. Yet somehow I'm paying attention like I'm going to buy one. Um, but I've also seen really well-known audiobook narrators who, when they record their TikToks, they've turned off the light in their booth. So what you get is like a vague profile. Like, so you're getting like, usually it must be the light from whatever they're using to read off of their laptop or their tablet. And you don't see their full face. So you kind of, you, you can see the outline of the microphone and maybe a little bit of like the shape, but you can tell there's a person there. It's not pure black, but you're not seeing details of them. Um, so even for that, like audiobook narrators, so even if they're not, if putting a face on causes it, causes them to not be able to use their voice the way that they're used to, there are, there are ways around that. And that's something that, I, you know, you see, and those are very successful accounts. Um, I just saw there's this, there was this um, reader who's been desperately trying to get an audiobook narrator to either read something specific for her or say her name or something like that. And she kept posting these videos and like campaigning and being like requesting that other people repost it or tag this narrator. And finally, I saw it. Finally, this person duetted her um, and did say something. And it, it was one of the narrators who does that, who has it like blacked out and you don't see their face, if their lights are off in their booth. And it was just yeah. very funny because I saw this woman's video, multiple different videos desperately because she's a massive fangirl of this audiobook narrator. Now, if you're an audiobook narrator, maybe that's intimidating. Like it, it can be like, you know, authors are over here getting this really hyper specific requests for what we write, which can be really hard to deal with. Um, but I do think it, it plays into this idea that the audiobook narrators are kind of the cool kids yeah, and everyone's and it just be friends cool. with them. And it goes to show again that like they're seen as almost celebrities on the app and that this is again part of the culture of the app. So like, for example, if somebody's like, I love Joe Jonas, like, oh my God, he's the best. And then he happens to see it. It's 
common for celebrities who are good at TikTok, like Joe Jonas, um, Lizzo, people like that will do at it. So like if somebody, Lizzo has a new song out, somebody is uh, playing their flute along with it like she does, or they're dancing or they're whatever. It's very common for celebrities who are good at TikTok and who understand how to engage with their audience to do at that video and either play along or like be like, hey, how's it going, you know, or whatever. Um, it's like a really good way to connect with the audience. And so it just goes to show again that like audiobook narrators have that same kind of celebrity feel on the app. Um, they're just regarded pretty highly, I think. Well, thank you. That's reassuring for uh, introverts. And I see that Joe has joined us on stage and I know we're running out of time and I want to make sure we get time for everybody's questions. So last chance, if you have any questions, you can invite yourself up on stage or you can type it in the comment, the Q&A or react uh, session section. Uh -huh. All you have to do is put uh, push an emoji and then you can type your message. So welcome back, Joe. Did you have another question? Uh, three really quick questions. First, my narrator is a 16-year-old girl, and I wonder if, if there's any suggestions of how to find, I mean, the narrator of my story, and how to find a narrator who might have some following, maybe. Um, also, I tried to get onto your website and uh, okay. through three different browsers on my computer, and it says restricted. Um, so um, maybe you can, maybe I'll have the name wrong, tiktoksales.com. Yeah, that's and, wrong. So it's yes. TikTok sells books and TikTok is spelled T-I-K-T-O-K, -K, sells books. So yeah. sells books, there you go. So the narrator question and so also, narrator, can, go ahead. Yeah, mm -hmm. as far as finding somebody, I mean, I would just hop on TikTok, start scrolling through. Uh, again, you can search for um in the search bar you can look for audiobook narrator and then just start scrolling through and i would look for a book that's similar to yours and maybe some uh narrators who have done work and whether or not they have tiktok accounts and you can kind of start browsing through like it's kind of a nice way to see what somebody is about before you ask for an audition or something like that i gotcha. a lot of the okay, audiobook that's... narrators also do like they'll read a line I've seen this quite a bit. Either they will reread a line if they if they are the narrator of a of a relatively popular book, they will reread a famous line from that book with a different accent or pretending to be a different gender or a different age or something like that. Those are always funny, especially if Book Talk kind of has heard that or knows that line before. Or they'll read famous lines, like they'll read a line from Pride and Prejudice and they'll do it in different voices. Um, book Talk goes wild for that. Um, uh, and, and I have no idea what else I was going to say. I'm so sorry. Go ahead with your third question, Joe. <laughs> really? Uh, I, you're just like me. Um, do you need an influencer? You know, a lot of the success you talked about sounds like people saying, oh, you got to read this book. I love it. You don't have to No. So there we, I mean, that's what we were trying to say. Like, there's a difference between the results you can see as one author posting videos about your book and then like what we would call true virality, which is where people start to talk, you know, and Colleen Hoover has even said this herself, like it's not her exact videos that are leading to those massive numbers, right? It's the fact that a million people are now talking about all of her books. That's true virality. But we have seen um, even students in our class during their first uh, seven assignments get videos that have more than, uh, I don't know what, 400,000 views. So there's a disconnect on TikTok between the number of subscribers you have and the number of views you can get. It just, it, like we said, it's a viral video lottery. There is a disconnect that makes this possible on this platform. And even when you don't have something go viral, like Lila was saying earlier, um, it's just that every day repeated, constant, uh, pulling that lever over and over, layering small effects that build up over time. And that's really how her and I have both made our careers um, in writing. So we've both been writing, I don't know, Lila, since like, you've been writing longer than me, but I, I think I was published in 2004 or 2005. And our careers are just built on small, repeatable successes. I've been a six-figure author as in net. So I used to be a financial analyst before, I don't, and I don't mind sharing this. But um, so when I say six-figure author, I know that this differs between different people in our community, but I'm talking about net earnings, you know, after my expenses and everything. I've been a six-figure author for 14 years. So um, we've done this through wow. small, repeatable actions layered over time, and they add up. It's, it becomes a cumulative whole. And so TikTok plays really in, well into that strategy, into my personal strategy for my business. Um, and if you can't tell by now, like 
I have an MBA. <laughs> so I'm like a business person. <laughs> Lila has an MFA. She knows like all about the art of writing and all of the smart things about books. I just know how to market them. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that there, everyone wants to be able to get an influencer to blow up their book. Right. <laughs> But here's the thing, even the influencers, the people who are considered book talk influencers cannot guarantee results. That's right. one of the rough things about TikTok. And one of the reasons that I think that there's not more, more of an industry around paying book talkers to do things yet. Because if you remember, we were saying like, not every video on someone's account will have a huge number of views. Even people with like a million followers not every single video they post is going to have 10,000 views. There's zero guarantee. There's no guarantee that if I hit X number of followers, every single video I have will do will will be a certain number of views. Now, you might hit a point where you always get those views, but it's probably because you know what you're doing. It doesn't it has less to do with your number of followers. Quite frankly, high follower count and good views probably has more to do with the expertise of the person than it does with a correlation between those things. So in that way, it's a massive departure from what we're used to on especially Facebook, where if you don't have a lot of Facebook friends, you can expect a post to, to essentially die. Not Certainly not even all your friends will see it, but it absolutely won't get pushed to anybody who's not a friend, right? Um, especially now, like obviously Facebook was different back in the day. But um, all that to say that there isn't, even influencers themselves cannot guarantee a certain number of views to anyone. And so uh, many of these books that have taken off, it started with one random viral moment and then it snowballed due to other things such as like, you know, it's a really good book, the cover's compelling, all of these other aspects that play into it. Um, so unfortunately, there's no way to absolutely guarantee that initial spark. The best you can do is to do it yourself over and over, little tiny small increments and just raise like your platform. One of the charts that Jane and I were just putting together was that I've been predominantly using TikTok to feed to my first in series books, right? Because that's what we're supposed to do. We drive people to the first in series, get them in the pipeline, and then they keep reading. I changed that up for my newest release, and I decided to push people directly to the newest book, which is book 16, 17? Q, 18? right? So I can't, what alphabet. letter is Q in the alphabet? Somebody count. <laughs> um, whatever letter Q is in the alphabet, that's the number that I'm on. And... So it usually that intimidates people. I I I've, I was told, kept telling myself, there's no point in trying to drive people on TikTok to this late in the series book. But I started doing it. I waited for my release day sales to die down, right? Like there's a spike and then it plummets. And I waited for that to happen. And then I started pushing it on TikTok. And then I compared it, the tail or the like period starting a week to 10 days after release when normally sales are bottomed out compared it for this new release where I was using TikToks and these weren't massive successful TikToks. They were getting like a thousand views, maybe 2000 views on each of these. And I compared the sales between that and the previous book in the series where I didn't mess around with TikTok at all. And it was some percentage that I don't know. It was double. Um, it, it was a hundred percent different. So like her sales for Q were a hundred percent better. So double what the sales for R were in that like period, uh, you know, seven to 10 days post release and onward. So her average daily sales doubled. And that was just by using TikToks that were not viral TikToks, uh, but just everyday average videos, but consistently, like absolutely consistently, you don't miss. So yeah, I was uh, doing yeah. it every single day. And here's the thing, it was the same text. Um, yeah. We talk a lot about like, not every single video you post on TikTok has to be brand new and unique. Sometimes you're going to use the, if you're talking about your book, you're going to use the same language, the same essentially marketing copy, copy, and the other aspects around it might change. Like the background video might change. If it has your face in it, your shirt will be different, hopefully. Uh, you know, like that not every single video has to be fully unique. Again, a massive departure from something like YouTube, where you would never re-upload the same video. But on TikTok, 
it's quite common. And in fact, we encourage it to recreate successful videos because something about it worked once. See if you can make it work again and just change small elements, right? So small changes in order to iterate on the success. Right. And so just to like loop back to what we said before, it's because there's a disconnect between your followers and who sees the views, uh, sees the videos in their for you page uh, feed. So this is the algorithm picking and choosing who to show it to. And there's 1.5, more than 1 billion people to show it to in any given month. And so, you know, if you're getting a thousand, 2000 views, these could be all new people seeing it every time. Uh, rather than people who are following you and coming to your profile and looking at every single video. You're hoping to get a for you page percentage that's 80% um, or more of the people watching. So you're trying to reach as many of those 1 billion people as you possibly can and not keep showing your things to the same people over and over. Thank you. Did that answer your questions, Joe? Yes, thank you. Thanks, guys. That was great. Awesome. Thank okay, you. Great. Thank you for joining us. And I know we're, we've run out of time and there's so much more we want to talk to you about, but I guess you'll either have to come back or people will have to join your class. Um, and, and speaking of that, um, you know, if you enjoyed what you heard tonight, you uh, definitely want to click on their icons and excuse me, and follow them so that anytime they are on Fireside, you'll you'll get notification of that. And you can do that for us as well, because we do uh, weekly shows on Adventures by the Book on Fireside. Uh, our next two series um, in the audiobook is going to be diversity in audiobooks next week. And then the last mm -hmm. week is again, uh, TikToks and book sales. So um, a hot topic. Uh, you guys have been fabulous, but I guess we have to talk just for a moment about uh, the news in China and can, can uh, you talk a little bit about what are you, are you guys called users, creators? What are you called on TikTok? I think we, we usually just refer to ourselves as book talkers. Book talkers. Um, yeah. Okay. So what, are, what is the book talker uh, community saying about uh, what's going on with China and the data concerns and what our government is proposing? And where do you guys come in on that? And what is the buzz? Yeah. I mean, typically Lila and I are not tinfoil hat people. And so we are here on the internet with you today. <laughs> um, we have Facebook accounts. We feel like, you know, our day, this is not new, right? Like, so we try not to fall to um, xenophobia or just saying like, is this different because this is a different country when we're doing the same things here. Um, there's obviously more increased scrutiny around it now. So I think actually the biggest thing I see people complaining about now is like, should I bother to invest in learning a platform if it could potentially get shut down? But honestly, like we're making hay while the sun is shining and the sun is shining very brightly right now. So it is absolutely worth my time and energy to invest. Um, and obviously, yeah, you don't put more of yourself than you're willing. Uh, I mean, on any platform, do not put more of yourself than you're willing for people to find out at some point because the internet is forever. So um you know, that that's where we draw the line for ourselves personally is just being comfortable with what we put out there. Um, and we're going to make the most of it while we can. So I, I don't think, you know, with this many people and as popular as it is, you know, I just would be careful of reading those headlines a little bit too strongly. You know, it, they're sensational right now. And so we're going to ride it out, the, I guess. The other thing, in, and we do cover this um, in our big kickoff presentation and that this is no matter what happens with the TikTok app, this is never going to go away, is that right. TikTok has changed the landscape of the book world and it has changed how we market and talk about our books. And even if TikTok were to disappear, if you're in the book world, you need to know what was happening on TikTok because I think we are gone. Like the days of posting a graphic with a quote on it, a still image with a quote on it, and having that sell a book, those are those are gone. I don't think there's any way to go back. Um, if TikTok were to go away, the reality is is that probably we will end up on a really similar platform. And so the content that people need to create for TikTok, that content is probably going to be the same. So you're going to need to understand short form video, um, how to work with audio on the short form video platform, because again, I think the time of like the automatic mute is gone. Um, I'm book talk. There's a lot of people kind of bopping around and throwing out the names of essentially uh, 
TikTok dupe apps and people kind of saying like, hey, are we going to this one or this one if it shuts down? But right. um, as of right now, there's no mass exodus. And for anyone in the book community, the reality is, is that you need to understand what's happening on TikTok, whether or not it, it continues to happen on TikTok. There are so many people who will say, you know, I made a TikTok and then I took it and I repurposed it over on Instagram and it did so good because the format and the culture of TikTok dominates right now. So if you understand TikTok, you can backfill that over onto the other platforms and it will do better. I can I could pull up numbers right now because I've, I've just now started really seriously paying attention to my Instagram again. Jane and I both kind of dropped Instagram for TikTok. When I post the same content I, without the audio, I am not bringing audio from TikTok to Instagram. I'm using audio from TikTok's library. If I use audio, otherwise it's just you me talking. Instagrams. You mean what? Instagram's library? Sorry. Yes, I'm, I'm not bringing audio from TikTok to Instagram. I'm using it from Instagram's own library um, or it's just me talking. But I'm, I'm replicating TikTok content over on Instagram and I am seeing more traction than I ever did when I devoted time to actually creating Instagram specific content. So in a way it's, the conversation is about TikTok is half about the app itself. Um, and certainly the community of people on there, the volume of people on there is important, but a lot of it is about the content that has developed on TikTok. Um, and that I think is, is evergreen like that we're only going to go forward from here if TikTok were to disappear we're not all suddenly what used to work on Facebook and Instagram isn't going to magically start working again it's we're yeah, short form video is here <laughs> unfortunately yeah, I think it is hard but short form video is here to stay well you guys and all are these lessons we learned about like how to market our our books is also you know like this is what I thought you were actually were going to say is like, we've learned so many things about how to make a hook that keeps people on in the first three seconds of this video that then becomes marketing uh, text that we can use in other places like our Amazon blurbs or our whatever else, you know, so we're learning these uh, lessons on TikTok, but then applying them globally. And that is still relevant. Those, those things that I've learned are still going to sell me books, whether or not TikTok is there. Yes. And you guys have been a wealth of information, but I feel like we've only touched the tip of the iceberg. So yeah. I encourage everybody to head over to TikTok Sales Books and sign up for their next class. Uh, Jane Rylon, Rylon, Lila Dubois, TikTok Sales Books. Thank you so much for um, really a fascinating discussion. It's so much information. Really appreciate it. And I uh, hope to see you again on Fireside. And maybe, who knows, we'll do an audiobook narrator in-person event one time. Um, for those of you who uh, aren't familiar with Adventures by the Book, you can head over to our website, adventuresbythebook.com. We do events on Fireside, Zoom, and of course, in person. And our next exciting event is with eight authors, eight wines in Sonoma, California. We're doing a wine and book pairing event. It's going to be a fun afternoon at Hook and Ladder Winery in Santa Rosa. So uh, we hope to see some of you there. And until next time, what is your next adventure by the book? Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Good night. Thank you for having us, Susan. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.